it's an MBA really, really important. I decided to have a conversation with my colleague who is also a friend about this conversation. Hi guys, welcome to the Smiling Professor. My name is Vukala and today in this video, I'm going to be having a conversation with my PhD colleague who is also a friend about her experience acquiring MBA certification, her experience as a lawyer and other interesting topics. Stay tuned, the Smiling Professor will be right back. Welcome back again guys. So before we go to discuss the topic of today, I would like to say thank you to everybody who subscribes to my channel so far. And the second time I want to comment on my videos. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for your support. If you're new here and you have not yet subscribed, please 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 hit time out to subscribe to my YouTube channel back again in the red button video. So now let's just go straight into the conversation with Miss Nanny. Hi Nanny, thank you for doing this. Nanny is currently a PhD student and she also has two masters. She's one of those academic <laughs> ladies. <laughs> Apart from the fact of me telling everyone about you, please can you tell me a bit about yourself? Okay, uh, my name is Nanya, as, as she has rightly said. <laughs> I am a second year PhD student and my background is in law. I am the first girl in the family. I come from a family of four children. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much for that. So, why did you choose to do an MBA after you already have a Master's in Law? Why did you choose to do an MBA? Uh, okay, um, it's in line with my, um, with my expectations, the where I see myself in the nearest future. I look forward to being a consultant who can travel around the world, but I enjoy doing what I do in terms of business. And given the fact that I come from a law background, I didn't know how to bridge the gap between my reality and my expectation. So the best route was to do an MBA because I am, I am very passionate about maritime law and the only way was to do, to do that was through the business route. So I decided to do an MBA to be able to bridge that gap between my reality and expectation. You said that you see yourself being a future consultant and all of that. Please, can you speak more on that? Okay. so. Um, well, aside from being a future consultant, I also look forward to lecturing, but um, for now, it's just a um, future consultant. So, um, I'm very passionate about maritime law, and when we look into maritime law, there's the dry shipping and there's the wet shipping. In terms of the dry shipping, we see um, merchantmen, cadet officers, these are the people that actually... Um, that are the businessmen in terms of um, international commercial terms like you hear terms like FOB, uh, CIF, um, cost insurance and freight so it has to do with um, carriage of goods by sea so and to be able to do that I didn't see myself going to court and defending cases arguing with the judge or my fellow lawyers I saw myself as someone who would more or less draft contracts and encourage and just you know make my money from that oh wow that's yeah. so nice yeah, that's, 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 that, that's really nice so you, you were thinking of the business aspect yes I was yeah so even if you have like the technical skills you're thinking more like the business aspect. it sounds so much like me thinking of the money aspect of engineering true very very true yeah, thinking, very of, true. yeah thinking of the business aspect of engineering the management aspect anything about the business world the only thing I knew about the business world was what I had read on say TV or social media platforms or conversations that I have had with friends or my parents so I didn't know much about the business world and I didn't even know I didn't know nothing I didn't know how to start with research in terms of the business world but look at me I'm doing a PhD in business now yeah definitely <laughs> we are <laughs> Yeah. So what have you learned being in business school? Was it worth your time? Was it worth the effort? Was it worth the fees? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, was it worth the fees? Definitely, I would say yes, it was worth the fees. Was it worth my time? Yes, it, it was and it still is worth it. Because I'm still in the business field and um, if there's one thing that I really, really picked from that was one module, Finance for Managers. Oh geez, aside from Finance for Managers, there's lots of modules. Uh, one of them even helped me learn my current job, which is I'm working part-time as an administrator. But um, in terms of, I think the modules that really helped me was Knowledge Management, Finance for Managers and Organizations and People. So in, these are, um, in layman terms, Accounting and HR. And this really, really helped me in terms of I can, I can be an accountant for my personal life 
-hmm. and I have been able to teach other people who have entered into the MBA. So the knowledge I learned from finance from managers and people that are not so good in mathematics or figures, I was able to teach them oh. and explain it to them and they were and well, they, I don't mean to brag, but they got A's in there. <laughs> yeah, you should brag, you should brag. <laughs> There's nothing wrong in bragging. So, <laughs> you have the records to prove it, so you should brag. The knowledge management helps me in my current job and organizations and people to date, it still helps me because I am an employee, not just an employee for the sake of, um, as of course, it's we understand that as a PhD student, you're employees of the school, but as a part time worker, I know the contract terms, I know how to, I know when to adjust myself when I'm falling below my contract terms, I know how to how to apportion the time that okay, this is what I'm contracted for, even though I'm, I'm going over and beyond. But it would not be to my detriment. Yeah. So yeah. yes, it has helped me. Yeah. It has, and not just in terms of my work, but in terms of in increasing my network. The people I meet on a day-to-day -day basis, I know how to relate with people by through the um, organizations and people. I understand certain. I understand that people interpret things differently. Yeah. And knowledge mm -hmm. management still also helps in that. In life, you have to know your knowledge champions. Yeah, definitely. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> You just call knowledge management, <laughs> which is like part of my PhD. <laughs> so what did you learn about knowledge management? Uh, one of the main things that helped me with knowledge management was um, there are different structures in an organization. So we know there is a flat structure and there's a hierarchical structure. Although these are formalities, but no matter how um, an organization might have an hierarchical structure informally, they still operate as a flat structure. Yeah. So uh, and it works vice versa. An organization can have a flat structure but still operate as an hierarchical organization. So when we say hierarchical organization, hierarchical organization is a type of organization that it's a top to down approach. So there is due process, it's something similar to the military. You have to go through every step, every procedure. It has to, authorization has to come from the top to the bottom. Mm -hmm. But when there is ideas, permission to innovate in an organization, if you're trying to move it upwards, there is a lot of delay when it comes to that. But with flat structures and, oh gosh, flat structure is just amazing. Like everyone is more or less equal. You mm -hmm. can share ideas with yourselves. You encourage each other and things move um, really really fast innovating moves really really fast um, um, processes being approved it moves really really fast so yes and it helped me because when I went for my interview I had um, finished my interview and they asked me oh do you have any questions for us and I said yes I do so two questions the first one was um, could you tell me a little bit more about the organization that I have to work for and they explained it to me and the second question was I told I asked them so uh, I understand the organization but would you say that's a flat or a or a hierarchical structure and they were taken aback because they had not initially put their structure, how the organization was structured into um, formal words. Yeah. So, so nice. they were really taken aback and they said, oh, that they didn't understand what that meant. And I explained that um, a flat structure, you can, um, colleagues can check each other's work. Mm -hmm. They can checkmate themselves. And they said, yes, that they operate a, a hierarchical structure, but informally, it's a flat structure because every low level staff they check themselves and then the managers check the work of the low level staff and then there's a ceo who checks the work but then everybody checks the low level staff can check the manager's work and point it out to them so yeah oh, i guess they were impressed, <laughs> they were <very> impressed. <laughs> very impressed. and it was the knowledge i learned from my mba that helped me with that yeah so, yes. yeah definitely <laughs> why phd in management rather than phd in law i'm gonna open with a story so um when I was to go to law school, I went to one of the northern states and while I was there, it was bombed twice and then when I was to serve, I was posted to the northern state again and my parents had this fright that um, it would not be safe for me that even if I had gone to law school somewhere in the north and had, I had stayed there for one year and I was back, they couldn't risk me going to the north again for another one year and of course I was in within the school, the law school compound, so it was they, their minds were at peace. But this time around, I had to interact with the people of the community. I had to 
fend for myself i had to pay bills and everything so they were really, really scared but i camped in the northern part of the state and but by the time i went to for my call to bar while i was still in camp i went for call to bar and my dad came for my call to bar my dad is a professor to so say you know and my dad was able to redeploy me based on security reasons i was able to get redeployed because I understand that my dad has is he's surrounded by a lot of um his, his network and network of friends. They really do know how to come through for him. But then it's the network and the net worth that improve that helps you with the business connections, that helps you with um getting to where you need to be because aside from the fact that you interact with people daily, I mean to get to where you need to be, the, your ladders are people. So you shouldn't just burn them, you shouldn't just um, trash them anyhow, and you shouldn't treat them anyhow. So uh, I chose to do a PhD because it was the best way for me to become a consultant. It was the best way for me to attain where I saw myself being in the next couple of years. So you're saying that actually being in a business school and having an MBA get, would provide you with connections you would need if you want to do something big outside education like consultancy, outside um, academics, is that what you're saying? Yes, um, not that it would pro provide you with connections you need, but it would give you a platform that you can utilize. So it's how you utilize that platform that matters. If you do your MBA, say in Nigeria, it would obviously put you before quite a number of people. But it's how you utilize that platform that matters. Doing an MBA here in the UK, obviously it's in a it's in a part that it's not a modern city. But then you have to utilize that platform. You have to make use of it. So it still boils down to how you use the platform that is given to you. Everybody is presented with opportunities in life. What matters is not what matters is not how the opportunities. Of course, the opportunities have to be legit. They have to be legal. But it's how you use them. Not just them coming legally, but you have to use them legally too. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, that's that's really nice. You drove on a very good point. So you think like as as young people or young adults, we should always try to utilize our opportunities. Yes. You are young. <laughs> You have an undergrad, you have two masters, you're yeah. doing a PhD. So if there's any lady or young girl watching you now, what would you be, be your advice with them? If they want to be a lawyer and they want to acquire something in life, they have goals. What, what's, what do you think? What do you think helps you get to this point? Like? The first thing I would say is find your passion. Not just, you have to discover your passion, what you're passionate about. If I am very passionate about business, I am very business driven. I am so I am so ambitious. And sometimes there are days you might not want to pick yourself and do it. It happens to all of us, even the strongest of them all. But you have to pull yourself by your bootstraps and do it. But the first thing you have to do is find your passion. In finding your passion, you will find purpose. Sometimes it's the other way around. You find purpose and you find passion. I never wanted to do law from the start. My father, of course, he, he being a Nigerian dad, he ensured that I do law. But in my fourth year, I found purpose in it. And this is something I tell even my younger sister. There is purpose for everything. Find it. Your job is to find it. Find your passion. When you are passionate about a thing, it's that one alarm clock that gets you in the morning. It wakes you up, even in deep slumber, to push, to go for it. When I came here, I didn't know that I was going to do my um, PhD. I just knew I was passionate about maritime law and I wanted to dive deeper into it. But I knew that I didn't want to stand in a court and say, yes, my Lord, no, my Lord, no. That's not what I wanted to do. I'm a, as, mo as ambitious as I am, I'm pretty chill. So I got here and the opportunity presented itself. And another thing is you have to weigh your opportunities. If an opportunity would not take you to where you need to be, you have to, there are other opportunities to present itself. It's okay if you don't utilize one opportunity, it's okay if you, if you know where you're going and you feel that this opportunity would not get you there, it's fine. You can say, you don't have to say yes to all opportunities, weigh everything. So two things I would advise you, find your passion and hold on to it. 
Do not let anyone drag you with you. Don't let anybody argue it with you. Find that passion and stick to it. Another very important thing is opportunities. So the first one is passion and the second one is opportunities. When it comes to opportunities, you have to weigh your opportunities. Where you're going to, you need to be able to know that these opportunities will take you to where you're going to and these people will take you to where you're going to. Two friends of mine, the first one said, a dead clock tells the right time twice in a day if that clock is a 12 hour clock. If the clock is stuck at 3 p.m. or 3, it will tell you that it's 3 p.m. and it's 3 a.m. That's twice the right time in a day. My friend told me that where you're going to, if the method is not going, is not taking you there, you do not change the purpose. You don't change the destination. Only change the method. Change the process. So I never imagined myself doing a PhD, but I got here and it presented itself and I saw that it was the best route, possibly the fastest route to take me to where I need to be in the next couple of years. So yes, I took it and it's a legit route. I cannot over stress this enough. It has to be legit. As a lawyer. As a lawyer, <laughs> As a lawyer. it has to be legit. <laughs> this is the lawyer Me. part of her. <laughs> To be legit. You, can't, you can't take the law part of our way. It has to be legit. If it's not legit, walk away from it. And another thing you have to have, one skill you have to have is the skill of investigation. Be your own PI. Because there's one of my mentors, there's one of my, um, I'd say mentors that I follow. His name is um, Strife Masiyiwa. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not saying the last name correctly, but um, his name is Strife. He was once the, uh, I think the chairman or the CEO of um, Econet. I follow him on Instagram, on Facebook. This man, I have learned so much from him, especially his posts on Facebook. When he explains business concepts, I get so much from him. There was one post he did sometime in, I think, 2017. He said he was presented with an opportunity to make quite an amount of money in such a short while. And of course, he felt that he had the right money to pull through. He went back and did his investigation. He had the investment to put into this um, business proposal and business ideas. Because a lot of people go to him with business ideas and proposals. But when he went back to do his investigation, he found out that that thing was porn related or drug related or alcohol related or something. And he's not a type of person that does things like that. So when he went back to do, he hired a PI and they dug deep. And the name of the company that he was investing was covered and buried under lots of shelf companies. Shelf companies are companies that they just pick off the shelf and then they just buy it. They didn't start it from the ground straight. But he found out that I think it was something that wasn't legal. I think something that had to do with either, um, I think porn or, or something, but it wasn't legal. And he, he just didn't, it just didn't sit right with him. And he said that it was against his principles. So he stepped away from that. So you have to be your own PI, investigate, find the root source, do your due diligence because the law would not exonerate you if you say you don't know. Do your due diligence. Thank you so much. I think everyone can actually gain from this advice. You need to investigate. Whatever you're going to do, whatever you're going to partake in, you should investigate. What skills do you think that young ladies would need? You need to be hardworking. Hard work is a skill. The ability to be hardworking is a skill. You have to manage your time. Time management is a skill. Organization is a skill. I know that, yes, a lot of us have um, temperaments. We like to be laid back, especially with flags. My younger sister is a flag, but she always shows up on time. Yeah. She's relaxed, she's chilled, but when it comes to, she's she might have it all in her head but she always shows up sometimes she might be five minutes late we can forgive her for that but she always shows up on time so you have to have time management skills you have to have people skill human beings generally they can be the most difficult people to handle to deal with you have to have people skills you have to understand the perspective that a particular person is addressing an issue you might be talking to somebody about a particular thing but you're addressing it from your own perspective you have to understand where the person is addressing your own suggestion or question from and try and meet the person halfway sometimes people might not want to meet you halfway but then the burden is on you my father once said to me in trying to teach me how to drive he said to me 
believe everybody on the road is mad you are the only sane person on that road so the burden is on you to avoid every motor crash and try and advise anybody that is not turning well straighten your hand oh girl straighten your hand madam so please you have to learn people skills have that interpersonal skills with people because having people skills interpersonal skills with them it breeds maturity and a lot of organizations, especially the one I work for, they want to see that sense of maturity within you. That you don't crack under pressure, you don't cry anyhow. Yes, we are allowed to be emotional people, but be able to handle a certain level of pressure. So those are the skills I would advise you. Be hardworking, be organized, have time management skills, have people skills. It would help you. And have discipline. You need to have principles and you need to be disciplined. Those two, they go hand in hand. Do not follow people of questionable character because an adage goes, the friend of a thief is also a thief. So no matter what you are doing, even though you are the one that is not sticky, you don't, you never stole in your life, the fact that you are friends with that thief, they will associate you with that person. Everybody has to each his own, but when you know where you're going, you need to adhere to that. and be disciplined. In being disciplined, there are some opportunities that will come to you that because you are disciplined and you are principled, no matter how that opportunity would help you, your principles would question it and say, okay, hold on. It might help me, but in the nearest future, will I regret this? There are some opportunities that you said no to, no matter how it will help you. That is where being disciplined comes in. Thank you so much. I feel we're learning, learning. <laughs> I feel we're learning a lot from you. Honestly, like, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You spoke about a mentor of yours. Yes. Yeah, so do you have other mentors and do you think having a mentor is important? Yes, having a mentor is important. I'm someone who is very spiritual. I'm a Christian. So I have a spiritual mentor. I also have, um, I have mentors for different things because everybody, you can't be jack of all trades. One person is an expert in the area where you want to learn from. So you cannot follow someone that is a jack of all trades and master of none. No. We pick from, as a lawyer, we're taught to pick from different aspects. So I have a mentor. Strife is one of my mentors. I have a spiritual mentor. I also have, um, I love to see women being empowered. I love to see where women set their goals and they're achieving it. So I am surrounded by powerful, strong women the interviewer of this video is one of the people that i look up to yes i thought i was weird when i came to <laughs> when i came to when i started my phd i thought i was weird because i was all over the place i couldn't find balance but speaking with her i i, I understood that yes i am even a low level of what i think i am but she's one of my mentors i have um, Dr. Sally, Dr. Sally is one of my mentors because she's passionate for people, she has a heart for people. She's chasing after things, she's helping people, she's involved in charity work, she's, she's a philanthropist. So I have mentors all over. I mean, and the mentors that I have, I will not name, I don't, I don't know how to name plenty of them because I'm not going to name plenty of them because you might not know, a lot of people might not know all of them. But the mentors I have are the people that they are close to me. They are within reach and if I ever have a question, yes, their expectations, they are meeting it, but they can help me bridge that gap between expectation and my reality. So don't have mentors that are far away from you that cannot checkmate you when you do certain things. I have my mentors, I can call them on the phone and they checkmate me for every step and the interviewer in this video is one of them. She checkmates me every time with respect to my PhD, with respect to my life generally. When I was doing my MBA, she was my lecturer. Yes, she lectured me when I was doing my MBA. And I, I was able to balance that because I wanted to learn. So I gave her that respect in class. If you want to learn, you shouldn't take yourself higher than the person who wants to teach you. If you feel like you know everything, there's no need for you to learn. <laughs> If you want to learn and you know that someone can teach you that thing, you have to calm down, bring yourself to the level of being teachable. So 
The interviewer is amazing. She checkmates me every now and then. And yes, I surround myself with really strong women who are my mentors because I'm a strong woman myself. And these women, they have gone ahead of me. They are setting the pace. They have set the pace and are still setting the pace. And I am just walking behind them. So they know quite a lot of things, especially when it comes to balancing your life as a whole be it in um academically socially intellectually you everything is there thank you so much you've been amazing so far Nene. yeah but you spoke about your surrounding the people you network with do you think that your friends actually help you get to your destination do you think having the right friends help you get to your destination you said something brief about it. What do you think? Or do you think it doesn't matter? You can surround yourself with anyone you want to. I think it matters that you surround yourself with people that matter. Because like I, I have, uh, I explained, a friend of mine told me that the, a dead clock would tell you the right time twice in a day if it is a 12 hour clock. So yes, I surround myself with people that matter, people that can help me. And it might seem that the influence that they have is minor, it's not major, but little drops of water make a mighty ocean. You need the little, little things, little grains of sand can make a desert. So a journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. You need little, little things, little people. I will give an example. I never knew how to do my makeup. I met a fantastic friend. She was able, because I'm a very monochrome person, black, white, gray, blue. Those are just the four colors I go to shop for. And I didn't really know how to do my makeup. But she is someone that combines, she pays attention to her looks. Okay, so now I'm mentioning two people. But uh, I met the interviewer later on, but this friend, I met her before the interviewer. Every time I have said the interviewer, I mean Bukola, the smiling professor. <laughs> I met um, this my friend before I met Bukola and I met this friend or I became really close to this friend before I became close to Bukola. So uh, this friend, she was, she paid attention to her looks, her, her hair, her makeup, the colors she could read and she was really, she's really bold with colors. I see she's, she's dark skinned like me and I see how we wear colors like orange, neon green, and I'm like, that is yellow. I'm like, that is very audacious of you. Very bold. So I made friends with her because I knew that I just didn't want, I, as a professor or yeah, as a future professor, I didn't want, um, I didn't want boring things around me because I mean, the book is black and white alone. So I like to see colors. I'm a big fan of cartoons. So I like to see colors. And then later on, I met, I learned how to do my makeup from her. She would do my makeup and I would watch her do it. And I started picking it up myself. So, and I also met Buk uh, Bukola later on and I became really close with her and yes, I started picking colors. I started learning how to dress as a future consultant slash professor in the making. So yes. Bukola was my lecturer during my master's when I was in my MBA. I, I, I watched how she would dress to class and how she would comport herself, how she would talk to the students and bring them up to speed. Good God, I truly salute her because she could take dozens of questions even after <laughs> class and I'd be like, will these people let us go? But she was always patient enough. She would stand and explain it step by step. Sometimes she had to take a whole summary of the class all over again that she could do like three summaries because the first person would have asked for a summary and the second person who didn't pay attention would ask for the summary again and she would start from the beginning so she was really patient and i'm learning that yeah. she's gonna become a lecturer soon so we're now colleagues and we can tease ourselves and she goes like you were once my lecturer and now we're colleagues which is amazing because nelly has really done well like she has two masters like <laughs> i always i always tell her like oh my god you have two masters <laughs> and every time you say that i always go like oh yeah that's true <laughs> yeah it's like she doesn't remember sometimes actually <laughs> she, she's just like nelly you have two masters <laughs> and she's like oh that's true so you could see she's really she's really a humble person i think that's part of the traits that have really gotten her really far because I think she's re always willing to learn. She said oh, yeah. something about that. Yeah. She's always willing to learn. Like if you know better than her, 
she wants to learn from you when it comes when it relates to law i go to her and i'm like yes now i'm your student <laughs> like now that we're colleagues like what do you think about this and she yeah. puts me through so i think it goes both ways yeah it does. you spoke a lot about um, your network and people you surround yourself with and you said that you follow people who inspire you like your mentor yes. on facebook and um, instagram and things like that so do you do you think that's really important do you think surrounding yourself with people you have similar goals with, similar drive with is really important. Do you want to talk more about that? Because you're following people that inspire you on social media. That's, yes, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Um, yes, I had explained that I met a friend who um, taught me how to do my makeup. I would have loved to do self learn but as academics, it's really not easy. So uh, she helped, she taught me how to do my makeup, how to dress and even Bukola to um, help me with that, especially when she was lecturing me during my masters so yes it does matter it matters who you follow but one thing i would emphasize is don't follow anyhow follow with couples the people i follow on instagram are more than people that follow me but if there's one thing i know is that i have a purpose a reason for following each and every one of them and i have a reason for allowing people to follow me we as human beings we might say oh there's no reason Sometimes we just say, oh, it's just because of this, but deep down, we know that that reason is not the main reason. We have to learn to checkmate ourselves and search deeper and find, expose yourself to yourself because no other person knows you better than you. My mom would say that there are three people you cannot deceive. You cannot deceive the devil, you cannot deceive God, and you cannot deceive yourself. You know this is the truth, is the truth accepted. So yes, who you follow is important on social media in life. It is important when you follow people you have to follow them with your eyes open so that when they make mistakes be it in life or character wise you don't follow blindly and make the same mistakes they do you see that's how they transfer generational curses you make the same mistakes of your parents and you have observed that pattern it's a pattern you need to break it be the fact that you have observed it it means that you need to sort it out so follow people with your eyes open. Do not follow people blindly. I cannot stress enough. Please do not follow people blindly. I think it's good to do an overhaul. You know how um, influencers do like, oh, it's a fashion over, it's a fashion haul. Do a followers haul. <laughs> the people you have followed two years ago, when you scroll through and you see that, oh, things have changed in the course of two years. They don't match my principles anymore. They don't do this. They don't. I know there's something called loyalty, but you might have grown, and at the stage you have grown to, at that stage, the current stage of your life, the person you're following is not helping that current stage of. It's okay to separate and come back. People, that's how the life, the rest of life is. People's paths are intertwined. They come, they stay, and they can go apart. They come back, they go apart. So yes, do a follow-up call. The ones you don't, you, that are not encouraging your principles, your goals, for you to strive harder, it's okay to unfollow them and follow them back. That's absolutely fine. It's not about loyalty. Don't be, don't do blind loyalty, please. Even God gave us free will to think and reassess. He says, test all spirits. Reassess everything that you're doing. Reassess if that's why we have we go to trials. Reassess if following God is truly worth it. That's why God always proves himself every time, over and over again, over and over again. When you go through things, you can think back and say, oh Lord, I'm thankful. So yes, please, do a haul of everybody you follow. If they don't match your, your goals, your principles, your values, things that you would not allow, just you can be friends with someone from afar. You don't have to go close and intimate with that person. Always remember, a friendship is symbiotic. It's not parasitic. Please. You can't be the only one pouring into somebody and the person is not pouring to you or the person is pouring garbage to you. A bird does not sing its best tunes when there are hunters around. The hunters will shoot it down. Oh, thank you so much, Nani. You're, you're, you're speaking words, like <laughs> honestly, you're speaking, you're speaking words and we're so <laughs> grateful that you made the time to come and do this. So I'm going to put Nani's Instagram and um, 
Facebook and all of that in this video so you can you can follow her obviously and if you guys want me to interview her again because I, I think I, I want to start this thing where I interview academics because what happens is most academics don't come on social media for yes. some where I, ha I know a lot of doctors like female doctors like PhD doctors medical doctors they don't do social media and I want like us to show other aspects of other aspects of ladies we have a lot of perspective of ladies on social media but I want to show these aspects of the academics and the, the people who are driven who want to be consultants like Nanny who have nice words to say so if you want her to come again please let me know down in the comment section below yeah, but Nanny, do you have any other thing you want to say? Or I am very happy and excited I got to do this video. I am so, so happy. I One thing I know I'm very passionate about, I'm passionate about quite a number of things, but one thing I know I'm very passionate about is seeing that women are empowered, seeing that we can encourage ourselves and not the stereotypical, oh, we're always pulling ourselves down, no. We can change that stereotype, we can encourage ourselves, we can be happy for each other, we can help each other succeed. As a young woman out there, you have your goals, you have your ambition, you are driven, you want to, you, you know where you're going to and you want people, you want to be able to get there. Surround yourself with people, at least feed your soul and your spirit with these things that would increase your passion. So I'm so happy to be here and I would Sorry, really yeah. love I mean, if success stories come out of this, I'm, I'm really, really yeah. happy. Yeah, before you go, I know we're both Christians, so I want to touch a bit about that okay. because you mentioned it. We're both Christians. It's going to be the last question. I, I'm, for me personally, I know God has played a big role in my life and my dreams because you could dream everything you want, but without God, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to, I want to speak a bit about that, how your faith in God has helped you through your career so far. Wow. Oh, jeez. Ah. Uh, <laughs> it's a really deep one <laughs> because um god god is god is everything to me and my relationship with god is something that has grown i mean no human being is perfect but that statement should not be used as an excuse to then become rebellious towards god because even the bible says rebellion is like witchcraft so God has played so much, so important, so many important roles in my life. I didn't know how I would be doing a PhD today. I just knew that I was going to do my master's and I didn't know I was going to do two master's for that matter. And I have two in the bag. And now I'm about, I'm about to bag the PhD. So God has been faithful. God has been everything to me. But one thing I will tell you is you cannot lie to God <laughs> because he put that name God himself is not a liar. He doesn't speak with water in his mouth. The Bible says he speaks once and we hear it twice. So you would, if God speaks once, you would definitely hear it twice. And he would keep repeating that thing until you take the first step. You cannot lie to God. Tell God how you feel. Tell him what you need. That's the only way you will get to XT. I, I think in... Um, I'm going to quote a scripture, I think in Psalm 19, the late part of Psalm 19 or the early part of Psalm 20. I can't really remember which Psalm now, but David was like, was more or less, I'm going to paraphrase it. David was more or less saying that, expose the hidden intentions of my heart, the secret places of my heart that I don't want. Everybody has a secret place in their heart and their head that they don't want to ever open up. But when you open that up, it's God that gives you that strength to walk through it. So he's holding your hand. He's carrying you through it. So one thing I'll tell you is if you're, you're a Christian, you're a Muslim, you believe in God. The bottom line, the baseline is you believe in God. Stick to this. Expose it to God. Only God can help you. The strength to move on, the courage to carry on, the grace to finish, he can help you. So God is everything to me. And... I'm a Christian. The Bible says he is I am that I am. That is, I am who you say I am to you. If you say God is your if you say God is your provider, he will be that provider to you. If you that's why we can dig into dialects, Nigerian dialects, and come up with interesting names. We come up with only Duromi. That's the one that guarantees me. You're looking for a guarantor someone, then God guarantees pulls someone from nowhere to to stand as a guarantor for you. So yes, he is who you say. 
he is who you say he is to you. Anything you name, he would be that. So, yeah, so that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Nelly. I can't even thank you enough. You've said so many things <laughs> in this video that I know that young ladies, people out there, male or female, could learn from. Starting from um, MBA business school, you spoke about law, you spoke about encouragement, hard work, discipline, you spoke about God. So I can't even thank you enough for agreeing to do this. So thank you so much. But is it okay for people to follow you on Instagram? And Yes, it is. Yeah, so we're going to post her Instagram somewhere in this video just so you can follow her and hopefully ask her questions and things. I'm sure she's happy to help. Yes, I'm happy to answer questions. I have to put out a caveat out there. I am not the Instagram influencer. You will hardly see pictures on my page and I do not post uh, quotations or inspirational things. I'm more of a one-on-one -on -one person. If you ask me questions, I'm happy to answer them. If you slide into the DM and ask me questions, intellectual questions or encouraging questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah. I want to say thank you to Miss Nenny for taking time out to actually do this video for us. And if you really learned anything from the conversation I had with her, and if you've learned any lesson, please put your comments down below. Tell me the most interesting thing you think she said. Just let us know. Because by you putting a comment, it allows YouTube to promote videos to other people with similar interests. So thank you so much, Miss Nenny. Her Instagram handle is going to be somewhere in this video. You can always contact her. You should contact her if you have any academic related topics or life related topics that she could help you with because she's really busy and she wouldn't have time to have just social conversations you can always follow her on instagram and on twitter i also want to say thank you to everybody who subscribed to my channel so far and has taken time out to comment on my videos thank you to each and every one of you for your support if you're new here and you have not yet subscribed please please take the time out to subscribe to my new channel by hitting the red button below also like and share my videos and don't forget to click the notification bell so you always know when i upload thanks guys see you next week. Bye guys!